racist sister-in-law said something that I could never forgive. But I have a plan to get her fired and destroy her life. Am I the a-hole? I've been married to my wife for about 10 years, and we're a mixed race couple. I'm Asian and she's cock Asian. I've got along with her family, mother-in-law, brother-in-law, sister-in-law, but I always felt like her father-in-law and other sister-in-law, Sarah, never really liked me. I'm a professional trained chef with 15 plus years of experience, and I work at a high-end Chinese restaurant, a spinoff of a popular one in Beijing in a large US city. My crew and I have won several awards, and I've been explicitly told I'll be the next executive chef. Sarah is also a professionally trained chef. What is this family? She constantly brags about it and no joke compares herself out loud to Ramsey and Bourdain. Whenever I'm at my mother-in-law and father-in-law's house and helping out in the kitchen, Sarah is always criticizing everything I do. Whether it's chopping, braising, marinating, etc. She always butts in the comments and is like, um, I think you should actually do X like this. I've been patient for my wife and sidestepping those comments saying things like, thanks, but I'll stick to the way I do it. Things came to a head two weeks ago when my wife, father-in-law, mother-in-law, and I were in her parents' kitchen prepping dinner for my mother-in-law's birthday. We were running a bit behind, so things were heated. Oh, God. Which I kind of like, because <laughs> it reminded me of work. And that's when Sarah walked in. She took one look at what I was doing, scoffed, <laughs> and said something like, oh, wow, okay, so that's not the right way of doing things. It hit a nerve, and I pretty sternly told her to stop criticizing my cooking and that I'm also a chef like her. She laughed and said, making Kung Pao chicken at some Chinese restaurant doesn't count. Lady! The kitchen went silent. Father-in-law snorted slash chuckled, and my mother-in-law yelled, Sarah, what the hell is wrong with you? I stopped what I was doing, swore at her, and called her a racist piece of shit. Apologized to my mother-in-law for not being able to stay, and left for home with my wife. Apparently, this caused a massive fight after we left, with my mother-in-law, brother-in-law, other sister-in-law taking my side, and father-in-law Sarah saying, It was a joke, but kind of true, and that I was being too sensitive. The extended family somehow got wind of this and now everyone is arguing and taking sides. We love it. We're going to take sides too. With my wife even getting texts from some of her cousins apologizing for Sarah's behavior. Despite being on my side, my wife is begging me to apologize so the fighting will stop. But I refuse because Sarah and her blatant racism. Mm. So am I the a-hole? There is an update. Oh, but first I want you to tippy tap on your keyboards and tell me is OP the a-hole? John, quickly now, before mm. we go into the update, mm. is OP the a-hole? Absolutely not. OP laying down the law, which like shout out to you, OP. And like high key, OP has just been dealing with it. Like all yeah. the small it's comments. It's not an isolated over, incident. It's not an isolated incident. And this is your profession. Like, hey, if someone. Well, actually, I love when people hate me, but yeah, that's beside John, the fact. John <laughs> I'm a weirdo. Gets off. Yeah. Yeah. At your hate comments. Gets He's my like, degrade me. But. Like literally to someone who's like clearly dedicated themselves to the craft of like making food and yeah. just like, ah, uh, you know, it, 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 I, I, it would so get under my skin and infuriate me. And then, and then add that comment on top of it. I'm going ballistic. So there's an update. Oh, wow. My wife has also informed me that now Sarah may be in trouble at work and she's blaming me for it. Apparently, one of her coworkers heard her rant about what happened and reported it to management. Edit two. So it looks like one of my wife's cousins found this post and put it on Sarah's Facebook wall saying, this is you, right? Her Facebook friends are starting to comment things like, if this is you, Sarah, then I'm disappointed. Oh. I think Sarah is still at work. She might be hitting the fan soon. And now my wife is pissed too. We'll try to update, but might have to delete posts if things go nuclear. Edit three. Was considering removing, but I just got a voicemail from my father-in-law that my presence was only being tolerated up until this point and threatened a world of hurt if I didn't delete this post. I'm eventually going to keep it up now. And if you're still reading this, Doug, I'm very disappointed in you. You're better than this. Whoa, talk about showing your true colors. I love how she's like calling out by name. Fucking Doug. My wife got a call from sister-in-law. From wife's paraphrasing, Sarah started screaming, crying at her the moment my wife picked up and said that she just got demoted because of her Asian slur husband. 
You continue to be dumb and racist. Apparently, some of her co-workers have her on Facebook and showed the post to management, which combined with an earlier rant, double whammied her back to being a line cook, and now she might get fired. Ooh. My wife told her to go F herself and is now solidly on my side after taking the verbal abuse from Sarah and reading some of the comments here. My wife is still the opposite of happy, though. Two, wife called mother-in-law asking her what the F was going on with father-in-law. Mother-in-law was confused. My wife played back the voicemail I had on my phone, and apparently my mother-in-law literally just walked away from the phone without hanging up and started screaming at father-in-law. Hey, let's go. Okay. Three, Facebook post has now devolved into a cluster frick flame war with family and friends jumping in. Suffice to say, this has officially gone nuclear, but there's a little bit more. Oh my God. What more is there? So... It says is titled father-in-law, a.k.a. Doug. Apparently, my mother-in-law and father-in-law were already having trouble in their marriage, and it was only made worse with a certain 2016 presidential election. She's a Democrat, and he had apparently gone more far right since then. Seems that a line was crossed with the Kung Pao incident and his voicemail. When he refused to apologize for anything, typical Doug, she asked for a divorce, and he went berserk. She didn't feel safe, so that's when she came over. But there's even more, John. Oh, God. So this is a fall from the extended family. You may have been able to tell already, but the extended family was largely arguing, fighting, divided along political lines for a few years now, and my cousin's Facebook post was likely just the light that set off the powder keg. According to my mother-in-law, the fall has allegedly already led to some breakups, excommunication of some family members, and even an argument that ended in police involvement. And then finally, the fallout for Sarah and sister-in-law. Tell me. According to my mother-in-law, Sarah came over to her place on Friday. The writing on the wall was that she was basically forced to quit. Despite her trying to start from scratch as a line cook, the entire staff turned against her. Nothing was coming back from the dish pit for her, and she was getting the cold shoulder. She's a great chef. I will admit this is true, but they took no chances since it turns out, you not, they're partly owned by a Chinese investment company. Come on. Found this hard to believe and didn't want to add this detail, but it turned out to be true after some research. Word also got out around the local industry, and Sarah is essentially blacklisted <laughs> from a high end establishment. She's going to be only working at McDonald's as a fry cook. <laughs> That's right. She's now considering selling her home and moving to find work. As much as I don't like her and found her behavior horrifying, I didn't intend this to happen. So I've reached out to some buds in other states to see if they have any openings. Whether or not she wants to take it is up to her. And no, she has not apologized for anything. It sure as hell doesn't feel like a happy ending. Perhaps bittersweet justice, but that's all I can give you. Thank you for your support and thank you for reading. Wow. My talk about a chain reaction. Nuclear. Nuclear. It just like it was like the explosion that kept exploding. Yeah, yeah right. And you, just like you thought it was already imploding and then it just went. You thought one nuke was, was bad. Done. It to set off the nuke factory. So, whew, knowing what you know, yep. is OP the a-hole? Ab, uh, no, <laughs> I almost said absolutely. Absolutely. I, John, <laughs> loves racism. Absolutely not the a-hole. And I think this is an, I, I think an interesting question for everyone out there is, did the sister-in-law deserve to be fired she never apologized i think that if if she made that one joke yeah and then said hey i'm really sorry for my actions didn't mean to it was a dumb mistake and i'm really sorry for it i don't think she deserved everything she yeah, got exactly but the fact that she continued to hold that racist exactly. ideology and it seems like continue to spread it i think she deserves it going back to the original joke like there's like joking with like the intent of just trying to be funny and just trying to like whatever like yeah but this is insulting this this it it's was not a joke it's like a it a was a insult. true insult yeah. it was a true insult right i think also something that might be interesting is like it seems like this family is divided along political lines i wonder yeah. if anyone has had any familial fallout because of politics or because of like racism mm -hmm. or anything like that um we'd love to hear some of those stories especially yes. i mean one we got our election cycle coming up this so is true let's get a this, whole, oh wow whole you're new right world of uh things given conversation oh my goodness but we'd love to hear like what what are some of those dynamics in your families yes. from from some of the politic stuff that's been going on i'm closing the biggest deal of my life but someone's sweet 
juice might just ruin it all. And I think I found who farted away my career. So I work in upper middle management at a large business and entertainment events company. And recently we got back to regular face-to-face -face client meetings. Over the last few weeks, we've been having some intense and lengthy meetings in our office with a potential local client, which could really take our company to the next level if it works out. Oh, big business moves. However, a rather awkward problem has arisen. During these meetings, which tend to last all afternoon, someone breaks wind. The flailing flatulence has struck again. Silently, usually more than once. The odor is, frankly, overwhelming. Yet there is not much in the way of any clear reaction from anyone in the room. I've noticed some people very, very discreetly eye each other suspiciously, but it's quite a formal and stiff atmosphere, with several very serious and no-nonsense senior executives present from both sides. So, it appears people are just doing their best to ignore this rude interruption. During one of the windbreaking incidents, a junior member of the staff sat with her elbow on the table and put her hand over her mouth, trying to make it look like she was just resting her head. <laughs> so oh everyone's my cracking God. up. No, I think she's like trying to cover the oh, stench. Oh, she, yeah. Yeah, well, it's she's stinky. Like, on another occasion, I noticed one of the clients frowning and looking out of the corner of their eye. But frankly, I dare not catch anyone's eye. So I always quickly avert my gaze to avoid any awkwardness or God forbid, suspicion. Right. You don't want to think that you are the farter. Who done farted? That's right. <laughs> Everything at our company is businesslike and relations are generally good. I know everyone reasonably well on our side. So I had to assume the culprit was from the would-be client team. But imagine my horror when, after the clients had left our last meeting, leaving our team to continue the discussion amongst ourselves, the silent boardroom farter struck again. Again? Friendly fire? I was incredulous. There were three senior male executives in the room and two junior female members of the staff who were not always present at the other meetings. So I'm fairly certain the culprit is a senior management figure at our firm. I'm completely at a loss as to how how to deal with this. I'm quite ambitious and I've invested a lot of energy into making this project happen. So I can't believe that a senior company member is behaving in such a rude manner and potentially jeopardizing it by acting so unprofessionally towards other potential partners. Hey, everyone's got a fart. The potential clients cannot have possibly failed to notice the smell and I can only assume that they're simply being polite and professional by ignoring it. However, I'm just afraid that there are limits to anyone's tolerance and that sooner rather than later Later, they will decide one way or another to end their interest in working with us. Can I mean, you that imagine that oh. someone's like, hey, you know, the deal looks really, really good. We're going to make a ton of money. But damn, the smell in the conference room. Nah, this was just such a strange problem. How on earth can I voice my concerns to my superiors? There is an update, but everyone, I, I'm curious. What would you do if you had a, 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 a frequent flatulator? How would you approach this to save the deal? I mean, I I really don't think the deal is at risk. Sam, it's a, <laughs> it's a frequent flatulator. We can't have this in our company. You just let it be. Ah, you know, it is unprofessional. The issue did not go away and things turned out a whole lot differently than how I expected. So there were another four to five meetings. The farting continued. In some meetings, it was worse than others. It did seem that those scheduled in the morning were less gassy affairs. Despite the regular bouts of nostril burning flatulence wafting throughout the room, it became clear that we were going to be working with this client on a long-term basis and the atmosphere grew a little more relaxed accordingly. On one occasion, near the end of a meeting, someone cracked a very funny joke, which provoked an outburst of communal laughter, during which someone, presumably involuntarily, let out an audible fart. Who did it? It was short, not very loud, and if anyone noticed it, they didn't let on. However, whilst I couldn't be sure if anyone had heard it, it was certainly smelt by everyone. The eye-watering foul stench wiped the smiles off of faces and replaced the amused expressions of a few others with frowns. This seemingly brought this particular meeting to a slightly premature end as the most senior member of the team rose to his feet and said without a hint of irony, well, that's probably a good note as any to end on for the day. 
It was unclear if he was referring to the funny joke cracked a few minutes earlier or the fart. Indeed, he seemed a very sharp individual who probably realized it was a perfect moment for ambiguity. But I have to admit, the sight of everyone's eyes darting around the room to possibly try to gauge each other's reactions to see exactly what he meant was an amusing one. But not as amusing as moments later watching our senior management leaning over the table, exchanging farewell platitudes and shaking hands whilst yet another stinking fart assaulted everyone's noses. It got to the point where people let their guard down a bit and became a little less strained in hiding their reactions. During one particularly gassy afternoon episode, a week later, one of the clients, a younger female, was sat with the corners of her mouth pointing downwards and using a piece of A4 paper to fan the air, trying to make it look like she was just cooling down her face. Our director saw this and asked the junior member sitting nearest the fan to switch it on, please. Seems like it's getting a little hot in here with a completely straight face they're so buttoned up here i know right just say someone's farting on the fan went but the speed was set to the higher speed than anticipated and all that happened was pieces of paper meeting notes and a newspaper were just blown off the table and flew around the room along with the familiar pungent stench Thankfully, this was laughed off, and I took advantage of the interruption to suggest a break as we left the office juniors to clear up the chaos. During the unplanned interval, I noticed our most senior executive had hung back to help reorganize the group. This was most out of character, but it turned out he had just wanted to get the newspaper, which was blown inside out. Seconds later, he emerged from the room and walked towards the gaggle of us who were drinking coffee and chatting in the open plan area outside the meeting room. He radiated a beaming smile as he strode right past everyone in the direction of the men's restroom with a newspaper tucked under his arm. Hmm. Seeing that he didn't return to the meeting room for a good 10 minutes after everyone else had, it didn't take Sherlock Holmes to deduce why he had been so eager to get his hands on some reading material. This brazen and unashamed approach to bathroom business quickly led me to place him in the number one position on the silent boardroom farter suspect Ah. list. Here we go. I also especially noted that there were no more silent but deadly interruptions for the remainder of the meeting, which went three more hours or so. During our very last meeting, which was to seal the deal, there was an awkward culture clash. We work in a multinational office in a major Asian city. English is the working language, but between us and the client team, everyone speaks English fluently, but there is a varying mix of comprehension of our host country's language. All of our senior executives are Westerners and unable to converse in the local language. I'm not a local, but I'm fluent in the local language. During the meeting, two maintenance men wearing overalls into the room and announced they were responding to a report of a fault in the ventilation system. Oh, so they're they're literally going to redo the whole air ducts rather than address the farter. But both the workers were not fluent in English, so I did some on-the-spot interpretation to which our most senior executive replied, please tell the janitors that the air conditioning and ventilation system are working fine. We have very important business to conclude today. I duly interpreted, but the workmen, not at all concerned with the duties of the boardroom etiquette, bluntly replied in the local vernacular, there's no ventilation problem, but it smells like sh** here. Thank you! Finally, someone calls it out. Which basically caused half of the room who could understand to laugh and the other half to respond with smiles and looks of curiosity as to what exactly was said. Thinking on my feet, I didn't translate anything back to my side, but urged the maintenance guys to come back in a few hours because it was a really important meeting and we really had to get on with it. It was a ruse which seemed to impress the client executive who was fluent in that language and offered my side a way to continue drawing more attention to the constant bad smells than necessary. The deal ended up being signed off, it was decided both teams would go out for dinner and drinks to celebrate. Sure enough, the drinks flowed and both sides let their hair down as the night drew on. Whilst chatting with one of the clients, someone of similar level to myself and with a few drinks in me, I couldn't help but bring up the farting issue. The client replied, oh, that was our boss. We are so sorry about that. He's a great guy, but sits there in the office telling fart jokes all day. He says it's an example of thinking outside of the box to make our team more relaxed and comfortable with each other. So after each meeting, we were telling him to quit passing gas. He would deny it each time, but the whole thing had just become a running joke for our team, so we rolled with it. Sorry about that. So it was them the whole time. Very surprised by this revelation at the level of humor coming from such an otherwise professional and serious team, I felt it best to just laugh it off and not reveal the real source of the reek. But emboldened by this, days later, I ran into our senior executive's personal assistant, who was usually in the meetings, and asked her straight up if the guy had a win problem. Oh yeah, 
she replied. I'm glad that my desk is outside. He just sits and farts in his office room all day and just doesn't care. I ended up feeling like I was the one who had the problem all along. A keener sense of smell than most. Not especially amused by fart jokes and a little naive. Seniority level and attitude to public farting are not necessarily linked. I guess the quick question, was OP maybe the a-hole for not bringing it to everyone's attention and not addressing the issue at hand? Yeah, I mean... Someone shouldn't be farting so much. Yeah, it's too much. Too much, too much. I mean, especially with clients, big clients, like yeah. that's super unprofessional. Yeah. But yeah. I say charcoal underpants for the win to help this man break his breaking wind. I cheated and lied to win a brand new car on a game show. And it was so my idiot contestants would get nothing. Am I the a-hole? Give those idiots what they deserve. You don't get a car. You don't get a car. You don't get a car. anti Oprah. This is a hot topic in my family at the moment. I live on an obscure little island near the UK. We have a local quiz show that's aired on television, or telly as OP says it, Mm. that I appeared on a few years ago. The premise of the show is that you can win prizes for doing challenges. Some of the challenges were physical, some psychological, and some requiring problem-solving skills. I sailed through a lot of the physical parts because I wasn't a fat bastard back then, (laughs) and the problem-solving skills required a lot of maths, which is my career. So I was okay there. As for the psychological part, you had to enter a clear box room filled with something you're terrified of and search through to find clues to the next part. So like kind of a little, little fear factor. That's right. I thought of a believable lie before I entered the show. We had to list five things we were afraid of. And I put down all things I'm not scared of. I listed spiders, cockroaches, snakes, scorpions, and wood lice. I literally couldn't care less about any of these creatures. I grew up in a rural landscape, and I've had to pretty much deal with creepy crawlies my entire life, so it's not an issue. OP is a freaking badass. Ooh. My actual fear is a bit more obscure, and I really honestly knew I'd fail if I was put in a room with it. My ex. No. (laughs) Dun, dun, dun. When I entered the room, there were cockroaches everywhere. I was in my boxers and barefoot, which was incredibly gross, I can't lie, and had to sift through and move cockroaches to find clues for my next challenge. I did it in the time period ascribed to me and got through the next part. The rest of the contestants failed. Ooh. Now, I want a pretty average car, which I don't particularly want. So as soon as I legally could, I sold it and made a nice little profit since it was pretty much brand new. Oh, and wow. then I bought myself a rather nice car. I told my family this recently on a drunken night when we were all together. And although everybody found it uproariously funny, my family are split into two camps. Some people think I cheated and was ethically and morally wrong. Wrong, and other people think the other contestants deserve to lose if they listed their actual fears. I'm obviously in the latter category, but generally wonder what other people think. So am I the asshole about lying about my fears on a game show so I could win a brand new car? I want to know what you guys think in the comments right now. Tell us, would you lie on that game show? And have you ever been on a game show and have you ever lied? But John, what do you think? Would you um, be or not? I like it because because here's, 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 how, here's how I'm thinking about it, right? It's a game show, you know, it's, yeah. it's, Come on, what are the it's, it's entertainment, you know, at the end of the day. So it's like, if you can kind of like game the game shows, then great. I actually know someone who really, when he was 18, he basically like studied the formats of all of the popular game shows and basically came up with a formula to like win all of them. And he just like wheel of fortune, like all of them, he just went in a circuit and just like won all of them. He's written about it on LinkedIn and stuff. He like started no and sold the company way. and all that stuff. Yeah. That's yeah. so sick. It was a really interesting, interesting thing to do. So, I mean, I guess you can game the system. I say OP, not the a-hole. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. If you can game the game shows and you, you know, it's like, it's like, you know, if the casino is rigged against you, rig against the casino. That's what I'm talking yeah. about, baby. But I would love to know if anyone has ever gamed a game show ah. or what is your go-to strategy for your favorite game? I like that. A vegan Karen assaulted me in a supermarket for buying meat. So I said something unforgivable. Am I the a-hole? On Sunday afternoon, I was shopping at the grocery store around the corner from my house. I don't want to say the name because I'm worried about this getting on social media and I'm almost positive I saw people filming with their phones. So there might be video of this. Somewhere. Also posting from a one-time use account for that reason, but it's a national chain that's focus is affordable health food. 
think Whole Foods with bigger variety and way cheaper prices. Hey, I want to shop here. <laughs> because of this, I know a lot of vegans and vegetarians shop there, but this place has a full butcher shop, fish place, and deli counter. It has vegan products, but is not vegan, to put it succinctly. I was in the soup aisle, and I was checking out the bone broth when I hear something from behind me. Thinking back, I think she said something like, You should eat me. It's murder. But I honestly didn't hear her, so I turned around and said, Thank you. <laughs> what else are you going to say? This is such a blur, so please don't quote me on any of this. It's just the best of my recollection. Her. Your body will thank you, as will all the little animals. Me, really confused. Thank you? So I set the box of broth I was looking at down and found a store brand that was cheaper and put it in my basket. Her. Wait, I thought you weren't buying that. Me? Ex ex excuse me? Her. You agreed. Meat is murder. Me. Uh, no, sorry. I eat meat and I love murder. No. <laughs> <laughs> this is where I start to think something was really wrong with her. Her. You promise me. You promise me. No more animals have to die. You promise oh me. Oh my God. I just slowly turned away from her and went into the next aisle. She turned the other way. So I figured I was done with her. Never turn your back to a Karen. You can never do that. Instead, she looped around and met me coming the other way in the aisle and kept screaming. You promise. You promise. And at this point, she was in full tears. Her face was red. And now people sort of had boxed us in on both ends watching the quote unquote show. Wow. I was livid at this point. So I said, and this I can quote. Look, you stupid bitch. I don't promise anything. Leave me the F alone. And with using that word, I turned the crowd from being somewhat sympathetic in me dealing with a crazy person to me being an extreme asshole who was calling her names. This is a tricky flip-flop situation here. It's a tricky one. You know, the you crowd know. is with you until they're against you. Yeah, you got to know how to work that crowd. You That's know, right. Just stand-up comedy. <laughs> That's right. She collapsed in a heap and I tried to excuse myself through the four to five people at the end of the aisle. I was shaking because I don't enjoy confrontation. And I just set my basket down and went to the Safeway down the street, but was a bundle of nerves the rest of the night. And I'm still dealing with it. I have no idea what came of that woman. The look of those people's faces is haunting me. And I'm praying this doesn't end up on YouTube. Well, I mean, I guess the story of it is. The text. And I feel awful for what I did. So am I the a-hole? I want to know, John, what you think. I also want to know from the audience, have you ever had some crazy encounters with Karens or vegans for that matter? Or are you a vegan in yourself and want to curse some non-vegans out in the comments? Please do so. Please. Fight, fight, fight. John, what do you think? Is OP the a-hole for what they did? The Karen is obviously an a-hole here. Of right? course. Ridiculous. Her intentions are noble. I mean, execution she, not great. I guess I could give her a little bit of the like the, te the teeny, teeny bit, bit of just for using that word. Yeah. If she was, if she literally said like, "Stop, leave me alone. I didn't promise you anything." Everyone would be on her side yeah. and be like, "Oh man, like look but at what she has she to do." Her, she kind of like degraded her her piety. Almost. Weakened, yeah, weakened, and you know, the it's harder for the people to connect with you. She's no longer on, on the high horse. What do you think? Is OP the a hole? Put your answers in the comments below, and also let us know if you have any crazy Karen vegan stories. My white daughter wants to be Milan, so now my coworker thinks she's racist. There's something she doesn't know. Let me explain. My eight year old daughter is autistic, and her favorite Disney prince is Mulan. Ever since she was little, she was completely obsessed with her. And whenever we asked why she was her favorite, besides the obvious that Mulan is a badass hero, she would always say how her and Mulan are just alike. And she likes how Mulan never knew what she was doing either. <laughs> I don't, know, I don't know if that's like a diss or like this is in reference to the beginning of the film before Mulan went off to war in disguise when Mulan sings the first two songs and the first bit she seems a bit out of sync with everyone else and the second is reflection where she sings about the need to fit in and how she doesn't think people will like the real her oh, oh that makes it so much cuter my daughter has always struggled with making friends and fitting in with the other kids at school so Mulan's journey of eventually finding her path really stays with her. That being said, I can understand how it can sound when my daughter, who is not Chinese or of Asian descent, says that Milan and her are, quote, just alike. But because I know the context, I didn't see anything wrong with her wording it like that. However, I took my daughter on a play date with one of my coworkers and her daughter, and the subject of Disney princesses came up. My daughter, of course, used the opportunity to talk about her love for Milan and their similarities, and my coworker gave me 
a funny look. Oh, the stank eye. She's like, what? After the two girls went off to play, my coworker asked why I allow my daughter to say things like that when it's obviously offensive. I explained the context behind my daughter's words, and my coworker said that I shouldn't let my daughter word it as such because others will find it offensive. That's that's basically saying you can only like a Disney princess if it is of the same race of yours. Exactly, which that's, is that's that's that is that is racism. I tried to explain about how policing my young autistic daughter's words and insinuating that she was so somehow being bad by saying them could affect her. She already struggles to communicate her feelings to us, so the fact that she was even able to explain her feelings about her identity to us with words is a major accomplishment for her. For additional context, my coworker is also white, and I say this not to mean that white people can't call out other white people for being racist, but just to establish that I wasn't trying to argue with someone about their own valid feelings about their own culture and ethnicity. Ladies and gentlemen, here we stand. Is... Liking Mulan not allowed. Is OP the a hole for allowing her daughter to like to say to that like, Mulan is a lot like her? No, no, not OP at all. OP is not the a hole. Not this, at all. Also, this is like like I feel like it's the circle back around. There's a certain brand of white person mm -hmm. that desires to be woke, and I think yeah. intentions may be in a great place. Yeah, but the desire to be like woke and on the right side of trying to be super empathetic yeah. and i think again i i want to like hope hopefully it's not just like virtue yeah. signaling or whatever yeah. gatekeeping but like from a valid desire trying to like understand this like trying to like be empathetic is just saying dumb that is being racist there's a way to do cultural appreciation a thousand percent and that's great because then the people actually learn about and understand culture, yeah. about other cultures exactly um, so. so in conclusion op is not the a-hole but i want to know what you what you think you know and also who's your favorite disney princess All right. let's let's get yeah. that debate going i think my daughter's imaginary friend is a demon trying to possess her should i get an exorcism hello i couldn't sleep so i thought but now would be a good time to post this. I have an eight-year-old daughter. I will be calling Liana for the sake of my child's privacy. I am a single father and it hasn't always been easy, but we have managed. Before the start of Corona, we had moved into a new house in Northern Germany, which is close to my parents. Soon after we settled in, Liana started to tell me about her new friend, quote unquote, quickly telling me only she could see him. I brushed it off as she has always been creative. And since we were under lockdown, I thought it was normal. You know, imagining friends, blah, blah, totally. blah. Especially since one of my friend's son had also had an imaginary friend. Throughout the next few months, she would tell me about him. How he would come to play with her once I put her to bed. And he knew magic. And how his favorite color was blue. I started to get a little worried as she seemed to know a lot about this friend. At first, I just thought it was because she was missing her real friends and my parents. So I started to spend even more time with her. Even doing my work hours beforehand so I could spend the rest of the day with her. When a ghost accidentally gets you closer with your daughter. Yeah. But she kept talking about this friend. But everything changed two nights back. I had woken up randomly around 3 a.m. I could just feel something wasn't right. So I got up and went to go check on Leanna. She was sleeping in her bed, though her blanket was a little different than how I had left her. I figured maybe she had just moved. But as I was leaving, just in the corner of my eye, I saw a figure in the window that looks out into the woods outside of her home. I looked at it for a good two minutes before it simply disappeared. I couldn't figure out what it was. Some part of me was thinking that it was my eyes playing tricks on me. The next day, I asked her to draw a picture of him. And it looked like this. Let me see this. I don't like that. <laughs> He looks like a, a, a spooky 70s rocker with long finger hands. Yeah. Slender man. This morning, after she woke up and ate breakfast, I decided to sit her down and ask her about her friend, mostly asking simple questions. The main ones were, what was his name? Has he ever asked you to do bad things, like hurt herself or me? And if she was scared of him? She told me he said to call him Wittig, which is a name I've genuinely never heard of in my life. I did a little digging, and it is an extremely old German name. Spooky. Weird. Which makes a little sense since we are from northern Germany and we currently live here as well. But she's never been exposed to that name before. And I know no one in my family named that. She also said that he never told her to do anything bad or hurt herself or me. And she's only ever been scared of him once. Of course, I asked why. And she proceeded to tell me the story of when he started to come over to quote unquote play. 
She said it's a few hours after I put her to bed and she was having a hard time falling asleep, but she noticed something outside and had gotten up to investigate. Apparently, he slowly started to move to the window until he was right in front of it and just stared at her. Oh my God, I hate that. In her words, he was very sad or upset. So of course, being the sweetheart child, he wrote a small note and pressed it to the window asking if he was okay. And apparently, he shook his head no. She somehow managed to open the window a little bit and then asked why. She was told it was because he was very scared of the dark and had no one to play with. So of course, she offered to play with him. He told her he would like that, but before he could, she had to invite him inside, which she did. This is when I started getting scared. Just now? Yeah, dude. I would have been, I'm, I'm freaked on, out bro. already. Come on. She said after she did, he smiled and pushed the window open and crawled in on all fours, which made her very scared and she started to cry. But apparently, he comforted her and then he did a magic trick. I, of course, asked her what the trick was and she said he made all the lights turn on in her room to show her he wasn't scary. That would freak me out. Uh, I'd be like, bro. <laughs> he started to ask her more and what other tricks he had done. And they ranged from making flowers appear to taking both of them outside. Apparently, he also likes to show her the stars and the moons, which is why she added them in her drawing. All this started after we moved into our current home. I asked what they do together, and she said they just play with her toys. But sometimes he likes to play a game called Hidden. When I asked her what that was, she said it was a secret game and that I can't play it or it wouldn't be a secret anymore. Hmm. And there is an update. <laughs> Do you want the update? I do. I do. I was informed that Wittig is a demonic entity that steals children. Oh. Exactly what you want hanging out with your daughter. Yeah. A demon ghost, whatever you want to call it, known to steal children. Needless to say, it sent me into a panic. I didn't leave her side until she left today. She was supposed to leave on Monday for my parents' house, but something came up and we had to wait until today. I collapsed shortly after she left. I hadn't slept more than 40 minutes every night. I'm getting the house completely cleansed by a Catholic priest. Okay, like... Let's say this is like, bro, if if my freaking kid is saying like some Wittig thing, I'm just like, oh, she read some kind of book or whatever. And I would, except for all of like all of the things she's describing is kind of crazy. Like, also, I feel like when you talk to a kid about imaginary friend, it's like stuff that a kid would think an imaginary friend would do. Yeah. And this description is just like, I don't know. I'm 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 not rocking with it. All right. So anyway, I'm getting the house completely cleansed by a Catholic priest. He's coming over tomorrow. And then the plan is to have the place cleared out with Sage. And I'm doing everything I've been told to do, even planning to get Rose Quartz gem to place outside of her window. She is very much aware that something is wrong at this point, as I had her sleep in my room for the last few days and could and she could tell I was getting very paranoid. I told her that there were just a few burglaries in our area, and that was why I was worried. I feel like that's a bad thing. Like, yeah, yeah. Oh, don't worry. There's just burglars. Yeah, there's not a demon ghost. There's just real people trying to break into our house and kill us and take our shit. Just left and right. I also plan to be getting a nanny cam for a room just as extra security, just in case it doesn't leave after all of this. I'm just glad she is out of the house until Thursday. I think it is very pissed off with me, though. Starting a night ago, I woke up to huge scratches on my arms and horrific headaches, which I've never had before, as well as having strange issues while trying to translate this. Having a bunch of random ones scattered through my writing. At this point, the pain doesn't really bother me. It's more the fear of it trying to get to my daughter. I don't know if I should tell her the creature creature's origins or if I should wait until she is older to explain this. Tomorrow is going to be an extremely busy day as I also plan to go to a crystal shop and just ask what crystals would be best to protect her. Okay. Ooh. Sounds creepy. Uh -oh. I, bro, I, uh -oh. I don't fucking believe this oh. shit. I don't believe it. Bro. <laughs> yeah. Bro, I mean, all right, let's just say let's just say the daughter is telling the truth. Right, right, right. Or what she believes is the yeah, truth. Yeah. I would, I wouldn't like. I wouldn't be like, oh god, gotta get a Catholic priest. <laughs> like that's not the first thing I'm thinking. <laughs> yeah. I also have never had any experiences with the paranormal. Right. So I don't believe that at all. Right. Until right, okay. it, until I get possessed by. With <laughs> some wood. Yeah. <laughs> until I get possessed by a ghost. Sam. <laughs> I'm not gonna believe that. Yeah. That that I don't know. But but I also haven't had any any paranormal experiences. 
I would love to know if any of you all yes. have had any paranormal experiences because I read something like this and I'm like fucking bullshit. I yeah. mean, like, I, I don't believe that. Shit. I also yeah. studied engineering. So my engineering bra- brain is like kicking in. I'm like science. Yeah. But let me know if you've had any paranormal experiences. But that brings me to John. Oh, yeah. Do you have any? No, uh, oh, but, but, but I, I, I feel like like, do you believe in ghosts? So I think I, my view on like ghosts and stuff is kind of like how people explain like aliens. It's like in all the, you know, billions and quadrillions of like galaxies and stuff. There's not like any other form of like, yeah, intelligent so it's life. like it would be dumb not to believe in ghosts. I, I think I'm not like a super believer, but I'm I'm more just like I feel like something. There's definitely probably some things out there that like is something in that realm that yeah. doesn't quite make sense that we can't really understand. So I feel like I feel like there's probably John believes in ghosts a little bit. On. I walked into my wife having a fight. Some now she wants to vacation with him without me. I said no. Am I the a hole? She wants to vacation. With her five some? First, we both were raised in strict religious environments. She came out to me while we were dating. That's not the only thing she came out to. Oh. But I didn't think much of it. I reject the things that I was taught as a kid. Her family still doesn't know that she is bisexual. That being said, she never really had the opportunity to explore her sexuality before we got married. I'm a monogamous person. I have no interest in being with other people. She wanted to explore her sexuality, and I told her that I would be okay okay with it as long as it was with a woman and as long as she was being safe. She never took that step with anyone. And years went by with us living a monogamous hetero life. Okay, so they're just boinking each other. We moved into a more liberal area and made a great group of friends and life was good. Life was good. Until about 18 months ago, we had a party at our house. I walked in on her fingering one of her female friends. Let's call her cat in our spare bedroom. Our daughter was asleep down the hall. Oh, yikes. I was cutting it up with our friends in the living room. And at some point I was like, where's my wife? I checked the kitchen. Not there. I see a closed door. I opened it and lo and behold, Hold. There they are. Is that hot? OP. That's that's only a question you can answer. Hey, you know, you could turn these lemons into lemonade. All I'm saying, you know. Well, Sam, actually, I think he turned these lemons uh, into eye drops. Oh, unfortunately, no. Ow, <laughs> <laughs> I felt a pretty deep sense of betrayal at that moment. And we've had lots of conversations about that moment in the weeks and months that followed. She was like, you said you were OK with me exploring my sexuality. Bro, that's what I'm saying. Bro, no take backsies. And and you know, I did say that. She also said that I had said that she needed to be safe and the behavior that they engaged in had pretty much zero chance of transmitting any diseases. And that is also true. So I added some more stipulations to this, like not with our friends, not in our home and not in a place where our kid could walk in. Fast forward to a year ago when she comes home from a trip to visit some of our friends from where we used to live. Now she tells me that she hooked up with this girl. Let's call her Jess. We both both knew while she was still out there. I was quite upset about this. Seems like she violated one of the rules. But she was like, you two don't talk anymore, so you're not friends. I told her that's not the point, that we know each other and that she should have talked to me first. I think that is totally fair. You know, we were yeah. definitely in the gray area with an old friend. Old friend. You know. it, like, I think OP's now adding another clause to this yes. contract. My wife wants to go on a trip for her graduation, and she invited both of these people on the trip wow. with others. I think it's safe to assume that there's that something's going to go on. I have expressed how uncomfortable I am with this, and she doesn't seem to care. She thinks it's unreasonable for her to end friendships with all of these people. She's been super happy packing for the trip, planning where they're going to go, what they're going to go into, and where they're going to eat. Oh, yeah. I think the I'm question sure is not... eat out, right? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And it's not a question of where they're going to eat. It's who. <laughs> Every time I see the suitcase, I get a little sick to my stomach. No one in our group knows what she did, but I have avoided hanging out when Kat is around. What is the best way to approach this situation? I mean, there's an obvious answer. What is it, Sam? You got two pieces of bread. You got to be the meat in the middle. You know, sometimes <laughs> a sandwich needs meat. Otherwise, it's just bread. In all seriousness, I think she is kind of disrespecting you and your desires for the relationship. Totally. And that's a huge red flag that she's just not respecting you. Just reading between the lines, 
it sounds like OP does have a problem with this. Like yeah. maybe OP just needs to be like, hey, let's let's, let's reevaluate. Not. Yeah, which you know, obviously it it sucks for for the wife because again, like OP said, like she didn't have a chance to discover her yeah. sexuality. So I guess the big question is to our beautiful audience, what would you do if you were OP? The other thing I would love to know is for for those of you kinky little little Ooh. darlings. Oh goodness, that have engaged in a little, little threesome, foursome, fivesome action. Mm-hmm. Would love to know your experience. And also for those of you who have messed around within the friend group, was it completely harmless or was there harm created? Did it create some little, little, little tensions within the friend group? My niece wants to steal my prized childhood possession. Now her mom wants to rob me too. I won't let them. Am I the a-hole? So I'm upset and confused. And I told my sister slash brother-in-law, I would post here to settle this argument so they will be seeing and reading this oh goodness so we got we got some judges on the table for those who don't know neopets is a virtual pet game site that was really popular around the late 90s early 2000s it kind of died a bit for a while but has recently started to get popular again really i didn't know this still got a website still thriving i've been playing for years my account is 18 years old yo your your account can vote putting in the works putting in the hours and it has the stats to reflect that pets avatars stamps gallery trophies if you don't play it might not mean a lot and not to brag but i have a rather impressive account due to the fact that i have been playing so long don't tell me to grow up neopets are life jfk he said that (laughs) look it up all right (laughs) I, 34 female, have no kids, not child free, just don't have any. So it sounds like she wants kids, but you know, web kids take priority. Yeah, that's right. My sister, 32 female and brother-in-law, 34 male, have a daughter, 11 female, who has been very sickly all her life. I'll not go into exactly what is wrong with her, but she's been in and out of hospitals a lot in her young life and recently had to go back in again for a few weeks. I recently learned that she's been playing on Neopets.com for a few months to help pass the time when she's really not feeling well. She's gotten into it, and from what my sister says, talks about it a lot. She was excited to learn I also play and we talked about it when I visited her. I looked up her account and gifted her a bunch of stuff. Expensive stuff that would be hard for a newer account to get. In-game stuff using in-game money which can be hard to earn in large amounts. Anyway, long story short, she asked how I can afford the stuff I sent her. It was worth millions of NP, which I guess is the currency in Neopets. (laughs) Are they launching their own crypto? Yeah, let's see, let's see. All right. 10 US dollars would be able to purchase a thousand Neo coins. So one dollar is a hundred Neo coins. So millions of Neo coins is like tens of thousands of dollars. Wow. And she also asked how I have all the stuff my account has. I explained that I had been playing for 18 years, did every plot, every event, etc. Well, apparently she got upset at the huge difference between our two accounts and asked for more stuff. When I told her no, she started crying to my sister and brother-in-law about it. My brother-in-law came over and asked if I could gift my account to the niece for her upcoming birthday, which she has to spend in the hospital. Said it would mean the world to her. What do you think OP said? I'm, I'm, I said no! Oh, no goodness. Neopets for you, you little skank witch! Oh, no. <laughs> Stay in the hospital! Play oh, with those no. tubes coming out no. of your arm! No, no, no. I've had this account since before she was born. Before we even met my brother-in-law. I don't want to get rid of it. I still play on it literally every day. Well, he got mad and tried to guilt trip me. I'm an adult. She's a child, and it would make her happy in a rough time in her life. I'm happy to help her learn the tricks and trades of the game, but I'm not giving away my account. He tried to buy it off me, and I still said no. Now, he is super pissed and got my sister and parents on their side, which I I kind of understand. It would be very easy to be like, yo, this is just a freaking computer game. Yeah, they don't understand. They don't understand. I'm being hounded every day for this and being called an asshole because it's all my niece will talk about and she really wants it. I feel bad because she's just a little girl in the hospital and guilty for not giving it. I offered to send a bunch of stuff to her account again, but she wants my stats so she's not treated like a newbie who doesn't know anything by other players too. I feel guilty for this 
but I want to keep my account. So am I the a-hole? This is juicy. This is juicy. I want to know what everyone thinks in the comments right now. And also, is there like a virtual world that means something to you? I literally shed tears over RuneScape. So yeah, I know yeah. how that feels like. But John... Is OP the a-hole for not giving this sickly young girl her Neopets account? I think I would keep giving some gifts and explain to the parents like and train. I would be like, hey, let's like sit down and like do it together. Like yeah, fun. Let's yeah. play together. Keep, keep Let giving me teach gifts. you the tricks of the trade. You don't want to just like it's like the equivalent of like buying followers, you know? Yeah. It's like, yeah, yeah you might have all the stats, but it's you, really nothing. You, it's nothing. It's nothing. Yeah. Like you need to you need to earn you need to earn your place in this world. Because of the dollar value and the sentimental value, you sit down to the parents. You literally say, this is worth 20 grand. This is worth 30 grand. This is worth whatever it is. And I've put in all these years. I'm going to, you know, keep giving. I'm going to keep surprising her with gifts. I, I would love to play with her. It's like a bonding thing. Like come over and play and like help her earn her account. But I, I don't think I can purely on the monetary alone, like 20 yeah. to 40 grand. I don't know if I can just like. I also think, though, that kid <laughs> hospitalized <laughs> on her birthday <laughs> doesn't understand the value of a neo coin guys i think sam is the a-hole in this story <laughs> there's there's no a-holes outside of the story except for the narrator <laughs> i just told my sister that she deserved to be divorced because she did am i the a-hole i 15 male live with my parents in a cramped apartment they try their best to keep us afloat and it's not a bad apartment so i can't be mad about it however things got pretty bad when my 31 female sister moved in after her divorce. We've never gotten along well because of the age gap, but ever since the divorce, things are even worse. Oh boy. That's a big age gap. She goes out to parties all night and then comes back home and sleeps all day. She practically makes our mother do everything, including caring for her. My mom has to do all of my sister's laundry, all of her dishes, and drive her to and fro places. My mom is a very sweet, quiet, soft-spoken person who gets frazzled very easily, and if she does something wrong my sister will go off on her and make her cry oh come on sister sounds like an asshole when my dad comes home from work my sister will come out of her hiding hole and demand that he do stuff like get her starbucks or some new clothing accessory at the mall she sounds like she's like 13 what is this how, how old is she actually dumb like that always gets done because my parents will do anything for us which is fine up until it reaches that limit the limit does exist mm -hmm. for anyone who watches Mean Girls out there. My sister doesn't work, so she mooches money off everybody, including me. Oh. And OP's 15. I have tried to get my parents to stop it, but they say that there's little that they can do because she's an adult and they want her to be happy. They do give me money in return, but that's not the point I'm trying to make. Wait, so OP gets money for complaining? Bro, what? What kind of backwards ass parenting style is this? What is this? I've stopped bringing it up because we're not in a good enough financial situation for that. When my sister moved in, my parents wanted her to have privacy, so they asked me to sleep on the couch. Okay, fine. I've started sleeping on the couch, but then my sister started complaining about the freaking decorations that were in there and made my parents and I move everything so she could make the room into her own. My sister has also started smoking in the apartment unit, even though that's against the rules and could get us kicked out, pouring water on the cat like a freaking sociopath and bullying me about the most innocuous sh I finally lost it yesterday night and yelled at my sister that she deserved to get a divorce and that I don't blame her husband for treading wood, aka having sex, although he should have done it long ago. They'd been married for a year. My sister, predictably, pitched a fit and my parents blame me, even though she's been the one terrorizing us for the past month. So am I the a-hole? Because these freaks certainly think I am. So John, I want to know what you think. Is OP the a-hole for calling out the sister for being an absolute absolute buffoon. Tippy tap on the keyboards right now and tell us what you think. But John, do you think OPZ a hole? I'm wondering if that's like when someone's like that much of a monster, do you kind of have to fight fire with fire to stop someone in their tracks? That is what yeah. I am debating right now. The sister just needs some dose of reality. Yeah. And the parents aren't yeah. giving it to her. It's like sometimes you need to get if you're this crazy. Yeah. You need to get slapped and up. He's been bit. like kicked out of the uh, out of his room you know like all this stuff taken down she she could get them evicted 
by smoking? I think I'm going not the a-hole. I'd say not the a-hole just because of how egregious the sister is. I accidentally exposed my gay son because he kept pranking me on viral YouTube videos. Am I the a-hole? I feel like I'm pretty cool dad. That's what lame dads say. That is, it's true. Just kidding. No, I'm not kidding. I wouldn't say I'm anything special, but I'm super easygoing, supportive, and encouraging towards my teen boys. For the last few years, Josh, my youngest, now 14, has been playing prank and jokes on me and editing the videos and my responses to show his friends. He's even put some on YouTube, but they've never really taken off to the extent quite that he had hoped. Yeah, my son has no clout. <laughs> <laughs> Everything has been fairly harmless and I've never had an issue being the brunt of his pranks. I have, though, been secretly plotting my revenge. And he's going to start his own YouTube channel. I'm going to be the Mr. Beast of dad pranks. <laughs> About six months ago, I contacted a TV network in my home country who put me in touch with the producers of a popular prank show aimed at kids. No way. Yep. Yo, yep, that's yep. actually kind of fire, dude. After much back and forth and a few telephone calls, the producers agreed that they would help me take revenge on Josh in an elaborate to be broadcast prank that would see him finally as the protagonist. My eldest boy, Blake 15, was in on the prank and was to play a part alongside some actors that the show was going to provide. Two days ago, one day before the intended prank, and whilst Josh was staying at a friend's house, the TV producers and crew came to my house to set up all of their equipment. Hidden cameras and props for what was to be a home haunting special for their Halloween broadcast. This episode will never be broadcast. Why? I want to know. Both Josh and his friend, who's also not in on the intended prank, come home none the wiser and spent the early part of the afternoon on the Xbox in his room. Now, as prank time approached, I made the excuse of having to go and pick up some takeaway, and it was during this time that the haunting was due to take place. Oh, I kind of see where this is going. <laughs> if you see where this is going, say I see you right now. I see you. I see you. I drove my car to the next street. I pulled up and was invited into the makeshift producer's gallery in a temporary building on a neighbor's property. Immediately, the crew sprang sprang into action, rolling their cameras and coordinating their actors, my other son, Blake, and their crew on the radios. I was paying attention to the presenter who was being filmed alongside me, observing the prank that was about to unfold. When all of a sudden, I heard the words, terminate, terminate, terminate. What about cut? <gasps> no, nah, that terminate is like, stop. It was screamed from the seat beside me. I thought this was part of the show and I giggled with delight as I took my attention off of the presenter and I face the camera monitors next to me to watch the prank begin uh -oh. to see what's going to unfold. You know what's unfolding. You know what's unzipping. <laughs> to my absolute shock, the hidden cameras at the home were showing my son and his friend engaged in... <laughs> Yikes! They kind of accidentally filmed some illegal sh Is bad, 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 bad. I froze up for a moment and processed what was going on and then ran back to the house where I was forced to intervene and tell Josh everything that was happening. I have never seen my kid so absolutely horrified in his life. He went pale, vomited everywhere, and cried uncontrollably for two hours. His friend was equally distraught, and I've done my best to keep them as calm as possible while I tried to work out what to do. To say this is a mess is just an insult well, no, to the word mess. you wouldn't say it was a mess. You would just say it's a prank, bro. Got him! I'm still not sure that I've done the right thing. I booked a hotel and took both my kids there and left the TV crew under my neighbor's supervision to pack everything up. I dropped Josh's friend at his house, but have not yet discussed the matter with his parents. F oh, you have to tell them. Oh, this you is have so to. weird. Though they are aware something went wrong during the filming of the show, but that everyone was okay. I am still at the hotel tonight with the boys, and I have not heard from the producers yet. Josh hasn't really spoken to me or opened up all that day, and I'm not sure how to approach the subject other than with apologies and support. I am 90% sure that Blake has told his friends, even though he hasn't. Today, I effed up. Yeah, that's a huge F up. There is an update. So, I mean, I guess the question is like, what should OP do? What should OP do? I would probably go to the other kid and be like, hey, I'm not going to tell your parents because I want to make sure that you're okay and safe and that, you know, and maybe just game plan and really sit with sit with him and talk about it. But man, 
I need this update right now. Okay. I need this update. Just over two years ago, a well-planned elaborate prank on my son, Josh, went disastrously wrong. Wait, so we got an update two years later? This is two years in the future. Wow. Okay. The original post is here. It is not very safe for work. A few weeks ago, it was my son's 16th birthday. And as expected, he pranked me. Nothing as torturous as I did to him. However, I think it's safe to say that the prank war is over. He uploads his pranks to TikTok, so I won't spoil it perhaps you'll see it there i'm glad it all got resolved though it seems like the father-son relationship is still going strong it seems like it's still going strong hopefully the son gets over the absolute mortification of that experience i think what i want to know from all of y'all is what's the best prank that you've ever done or what was the best prank that was played on you Ooh, there's probably some really good some ones juicy out there. pranks in there this isn't totally a prank but it kind of works because i can attach something fun when i was like 15 years old my friend and i recorded a, a YouTube video called Dancing in Ikea. We just literally went and filmed me dancing in a suit in, in Ikea in just random places and doing like stupid stuff. Does it still exist on YouTube? The Ikea manager or like security, whatever was like, I will find it, uh, you posting it. I will find you. I will like track you down and I will like murder your whole family. I mean, literally like, and I'm like, bro, like 15 and we literally were like stupid, like completely innocuous. And this guy is just being like the biggest on planet Earth. He's trying to exert his executive <laughs> Ikea power. A hawk attacked me while I was jogging, but I have a trick up my sleeve to destroy this godforsaken bird. Am I the a-hole? It's called a gun. So I was running early in the morning like I've done for years. I had on a day glow yellow beanie and a headlamp, but the headlamp was turned off because I was on a well-lit neighborhood street. As I was running on the sidewalk, I felt this big whack scrape on the side of my head and it took me a few moments to figure out it was a hawk. Oh my God. He swooped. I tried to grab my head, then flew back before landing on some nearby telephone wires. Needless to say, I screamed my head off and ran as fast as I could. I turned my headlamp up to the sky and turned it on, but still felt pretty freaked out. I'm not at all hurt. The beanie is pretty thick. I'm also totally aware of how ridiculous the story is. Yeah, OP. But that being said, I can't help but be nervous about getting back out there. Sounds like OP just got rejected by a girl or something. Yeah, yeah, just like, I don't know if I can go back on the dating scene. <laughs> but you got to. I'm afraid to wear my day glow beanie, which has been keeping me warm on these cold runs. I can't understand why the hawk went for my head. Anyone have any ideas? Anyone have something like this happen to them? How to get over it? I'm going for a run right now but I'm going to have my headlamp pointing up the entire time. Now, Sam, there is an update. I want the hawk to attack again. Sam woke up and chose violence Villain today, era. ladies and gentlemen. But do, I, I want to know what solutions you would suggest. Well, so, I mean, one, wear a helmet, maybe. Um, helmet. But in Australia, a lot of people bike. And when I was living in Australia, when I was younger, on my skateboard helmet, I would put eyes in the back of my helmet so magpies wouldn't attack me. Because magpies are, like, known for attacking people when they're, like, not looking. And so you have to make it like you're always looking and put eyes on the back of your head. So I would recommend OP put eyes on the beanie, maybe, or wear a helmet. And also put eyes on the helmet. <laughs> eyes are essential. An interesting prediction. We will we will get into it. So long story short, I live in an area known for aggressive slash territorial owls. I run early in the morning and during the winter, I've had to deal with owl swoopings and head grab. I've been attacked a total of four times. Yo. Twice actual contact to very close swoops. I feel like owls, you know, are just saying like, hey, this is our turf. Get the fuck out. I was desperate to find a solution and reached out to the community and the bird subreddit. A few users actually suggested sewing eyes on the back of my I hat. I called it! I called it! I so called it! There you go. Um, Your boy knows fucking birds! Wait! Yeah, I was attacked by a few birds in Australia. What's up? Uh oh, uh oh. What's up? They didn't do it though. I was jumped into the bird gang. That's right. God damn. <laughs> indicted. Yeah, knighted. Indicted. I'm ready to fight it. Yep. Yeah. 
Get some. I had purchased giant googly eyes, but honestly, they were tough to adhere. I hot glued safety pins on the eyes and then attached them to the hat and a pain to take off when I wanted to wash the hat slash not run with googly eyes. I've included a pick for your laughs. This was the pick attached. Oh my God. Those are giant <laughs> googly eyes. Right? OP took Dude. the low key, but kind of like sick hat. Oh, it is. It is kind I, of. I, I think it's cool with the googly eyes. It almost, it looks like something someone in LA would wear. Like it's yeah. like cool street Unironically. Street yeah, yeah. It's like a street, yeah. street, street man. So. I thought this was going to be my kind of annoying solution until my sister sent me this mask as a funny, ha ha ha, you have a bizarre owl problem joke. So here is the second solution. <laughs> Yo, that goes hard though. Bro, I mean, she's not playing around with that. Yo, you know, if you get afraid of the owls, become the owl. Exactly. You know, Batman owl. method. <laughs> You've heard of Batman. Have you heard of Owl oh, Woman? <laughs> oh my God. Well, jokes on her because this mask was exactly what I needed. With its easy elastic band and flimsy plastic front, the mask easily fits on the back of my head. You're joking. Man's running with an nope. owl mask? Nope. It's also easy to remove. So if I'm on a long run that seeps into the daylight, I can take it off instead of being that weirdo runner lady with a backward <laughs> mask on. And you know what? It works. I started wearing the mask in September slash October of last year, and I haven't been attacked by an owl since. I was actually just featured on my local blog about my solution. A big thank you to everyone for coming up with some great ideas like peeing on the owl to mark my territory and making sure I'm not a bit Disney princess and moving. A big F you to everyone who told me to watch the HBO show The Staircase because the scene with the owl was so triggering. Also, maybe that was a crazy owl, but in the four times that I've encountered one, they hit then fly away. So yeah, he definitely killed her. I will see myself out. <laughs> hey, good note. Good note to end on. Wow. Wow. Yeah. I mean, that is a real thing that happens. Like, like birds do attack you if you're, if you're running, you know, through their territory. I, so it's funny as I'd never heard of that. I had heard of my aunt and uncle's area in Florida. Hawks were taking very small dogs. Hawks? And I'm talking about taking, taking, like they're gone. Yeah. I mean, that gone. happens in Topanga. Oh, like yeah, in, yeah. In LA. Yeah. yeah. You got to be careful because there'll be birds that will take your dog away and coyotes too. Yeah. More coyotes, I guess, than the hawks. But yeah. if it's super small, like one of those little rat chihuahua dogs. I'm about to sue my university into oblivion. They keep charging me more money, demanding I sign random things and stealing my sh Am I the a-hole? I have been trying to deactivate from my sorority. When I joined, it claimed to be different from other sororities. And for a few months, it was. Now, it's completely different. The exec board is made up of awful people and they make casual racist jokes about minorities on campus and in general. They curse people out and they force us to choose between them or academics constantly. My God. God. For example, several of us had a lab and we were told last minute that we had to attend an arts and crafts workshop. Professors don't allow you to miss lab unless you are on your deathbed. So we told them that we couldn't paint that night. We were all fined a hundred dollars. You don't come to arts and crafts, pay the price. There are times when we have questions about something like the dress attire for a certain event. And we are just told by the exec board to shut the f because those details will come later. <laughs> I hate being part of this, so I wanted out. When I arranged to meet the president, I was told that I had to pay hundreds in dues to quit. I was told I would have to order shirts that are expensive with our letters on them, but I wouldn't be able to keep them. I would just have to order them. I would also have to order the pin of my colony that I wouldn't be able to keep either. Those pins start at a hundred bucks. She said that I would also have to return everything that has the letters of the sorority on it. Although I paid hundreds of dollars for this. I even have to give back a pen that I was given when I got in. It ran out of ink and I probably threw it away. I also have to pay all of the dues for the rest of the semester, even though I don't want to be in it anymore and won't be participating. I'm being fined left and right for missing events like a Disney movie night over a meeting that my professor told me that I couldn't miss with him. The board has told me that unless my balance with them is zero dollars and I do all of the above, I also won't get my transcript when I graduate, so I can't apply to grad schools. 
Bills. So in addition to the money, they're just trying to screw over her future. I'm I'm so lost. I could maybe understand if they used our dues to pay for some things we did, but they don't. Every outing we have to pay for. If we buy clothing with our letters, we have to pay for it. We don't have a house. And because the only thing that we do is watch movies like Tangled and Home Alone and occasionally ice skate, lots of people have been suspicious about the cost of dues. Mm. I'm sorry that this is so long. I just feel trapped and powerless right now. And there are some updates, but what do you think OP should do? Start investigating. Uh, maybe even see see what a lawyer situation would look like. You know, I would talk to the school. That's it. You go to the school and, and maybe the other girls and you're like, am I the only, like, this seems crazy. Like, we should all go together. Yeah. And be like, yo. Unionize. Unionize. I mean, literally, because they're trying to squeeze every penny of, yeah. for, what? Seems Ridiculous. very predatory. Super predatory. But there is an update. So I sent an email to nationals about what was going on, and I have a phone meeting tomorrow with someone. I also sent an email to my president, formally declaring that I did not want to be an active member of the sorority. I needed this email so that I can be used as evidence that I no longer wanted to be in. I CC'd the guy in charge of Greek life. This was Elizabeth's response to my email. Mila, like we asked before, you need to come to an exec meeting to deactivate. That email that she sent yesterday it was not about deactivation and it was about me meeting with her about missing an event. And then when I asked for paperwork, it became a board meeting. I sent her this. Elizabeth, can you please provide text or emails that state that I had to go to a board meeting in order to deactivate? This was not part of the conversation that we originally had in terms of me deactivating. Smart. So I'm waiting on her response as well as my phone meeting with the person from Nationals. If I go to an exec meeting, things will go bad. I'll be closed off in a room where they'll force me to give up my property and maybe sign some bull****. Oh my God. So she could be pressured into like signing a contract. This is that so cruel. Wait, what is this? The Illuminati? There is an update. All right. So the ELC emailed me after my last update because I guess she knew I was getting serious. She's an alum who is supposed to guide my chapter. She told me that after today, being a few days ago, I would no longer have to pay dues since I sent that email saying that I would quit. However, she told me that I would have to give things with letters on it, as well as the items that I received for bid day. Ha! received as though those items were a gift. We were charged for those items. Yeah, $60 for a plain water bottle with our letters, a single flower, and a cheap drawstring bag. She sent an email an hour later telling me to confirm that I not only received her message, but understood. I did not respond to that because I feared saying that I understood to would lead to some weird agreement leverage that she could use. She then told me if I didn't meet with her by March 3rd, the board would be there and sign the necessary paperwork. I would be charged dues for that month. Wait, she just told me I no longer have to pay. Okay, so I'm getting pissed and I was going to ask her what kind of paperwork I had to sign. However, I had a phone call arranged with nationals already. So when I spoke to nationals, I was told that I could only terminate membership with permission of the chapter. That's crazy. What is this? Now I was getting pissed. I called Omega Financials, and this is where, if I were in a movie that warranted paranoia, I would assume that collusion of some sort was going on. Now, Omega Financials is supposed to be this huge company. But when I called, they asked what I was calling for, and I told them that I was trying to leave my sorority and needed to cancel my Omega Phi account. The receptionist went, oh, you must be Mila. One second. Hmm. That's strange. Out of the thousands of accounts you have, how would you recognize me by the situation alone that really isn't that unique? A few seconds later, I was told, hi, Mila. So we can't really terminate your account unless the chapter at insert school name authorizes us to do so. How the hell did she know my school name? I didn't even tell her what state I was in. What do you, what's your guess? I mean, it sounds like the Omega platform is the like ultimate, like bad guy pulling all the strings and they're using the sororities as a front. Maybe I think the meeting that she got with the person at that was high up is fake. Oh. And it's just one of the, it's like one of the higher ups in her own sorority. I was pissed that even after I explained everything to her, she said that my scammy chapter had to authorize a release. She told me to call when I get the permission of my chapter. And I told her that I'll have my lawyer call me next time. Her tone changed, but I was pissed. And I thought if they were doing this to me, then who else was getting scammed? Truly. 
I have meetings with several different law firms on Monday who are surprisingly interested in my case. And although paying them is going to be more than my dues and clothing, it's the principle. They need to know what they're doing isn't right. I'm not supposed to be this stressed. I'm supposed to be celebrating my last semester of college, my acceptance to Harvard Med. Hey, give it up. And just being alive. This bull is ruining what is supposed to be a great time in my life. Wow. Well, hey, congrats, OP. That was a nice little surprise at the end there. Yeah, Harvard Med. Not bad. Not bad. <laughs> not bad. Let's you see. could do better, though. <laughs> Just kidding. I don't know what's happening. Like, Greek life is kind of sketchy sometimes. Yeah. Greek yeah. life is literally just like an insurance company. My parents trapped me in an arranged marriage, so I said something unforgivable to get out of it. But I may have just destroyed my sister's marriage, too. Am I the a-hole? I, 21 female, am from India. My sister, 26 female, is engaged to get married to Krish, 28 male. I don't know this family very well, as it's an arranged marriage, and I just returned from home two weeks ago from France. I'm studying there. Chris and his family came over last week to visit my sister and see me. I don't know why, but that was their first time seeing me. LOL. To be honest, the family is super conservative and I feel like my sister could do much better. Ooh, I wish your parents thought better of you than to pair you with this total ugly person. <laughs> <laughs> Once they left, I pulled my sister aside and I shared my concerns with her. Yo, this guy is boof. And she agreed, but decided to go through with the marriage because my dad knew the family and parents and other relatives were annoying her to get married. Anyway, two days ago, they came back again, but this time with their extended family. Chris's brother, Sanjay, 26 male. Oh, another, another man who's going to the grave dead bro but the brother sanjay finds me attractive and now wants to get married to me bro your brother is ugly you think i want you feeling disgusted and angry i immediately told them to <laughs> f off my parents were not happy with the proposal and tried arguing that I was still young and in school. Sanjay went on to say, I can continue studying in my country. I have two more years in France. Like heck, I'm leaving France. My parents said no and they kept pushing it. So I told them all to leave because they're disgusting punts who can't take no for an answer. Wow. OP was laying into that fam. Bringing in the football Ooh. card. They were embarrassed and now don't feel comfortable letting Krish get married to my sister. So OP is like, yo, get the off my back, you punts. Yep. And has completely just not only destroyed her marriage, which she wanted to destroy, but also the marriage of the sister who wanted to go through with it. Yes. Dang. Nuclear, baby. And my sister is happy. Lol. Oh, nice. So, there you so go. She's like, Frank, I got out of this. I was almost going to have to be betrothed to this guy forever. Right? Thank God he called everyone a punt. My parents are on my side, but they think I was a little disrespectful by calling them the names. My sister also broke down and told me that she needs time and is uncomfortable getting married now. The family realized their mistake and apologized, but I think the engagement is probably broken. My extended family is the issue now. My grandparents and uncles and aunts are calling me the a-hole because I embarrassed Kreesh's family and I should have let the adults deal with it instead. Also, I'm known for being super blunt and they're saying no one would marry me and I should have accepted the marriage proposal. Am I the a-hole? Okay. <laughs> okay, I have some thoughts. I, I want to know what everyone else thinks. Is OP yes. the a-hole? Yep, 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 yep. You yep. know, I think it would be very easy to just say, of course OP is not the a-hole, but I want to take a more Ooh. nuanced approach Ooh. to this. Let's cook. It was a little bit intense to call the whole family a punt. Yeah, yeah. That feels like probably a little bit a-holy to me. Saying no, like, hey, no means no. Yeah. Um, and then leaving, I think that's okay because she was, she was pressured. But I think like d using expletives for a whole family just doesn't seem, especially if it's super traditional family. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't think I would do that. In terms of the outcome... The sister got out of a marriage that she was pretty apathetic about. And OP didn't have to get married to this family. And it didn't seem like the family was going to be a good match in the beginning with. So outcome is good. I think people might tear my head off about Ooh. this and Ooh. get super mad. But I'm going to say a little bit the a-hole. I know. I, 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 come, come in the comments and flame me. But yeah, I, I like even if someone was like insulting my genitals, I still don't <laughs> think I would call them a punt. And I mean, that's yeah, that's pretty far going going for the going for the genitals, going, going for, for the, the sack. Genitals, you know? Are you kidding me?
Okay, I'm burning with you, baby. All right, all we're right. going a hole. Right. Hey. If you want to burn with us, let us know what you think. There we go. I would love for everyone in the comments to describe their dream partner. Like, what do they look like? It's a very sweet exercise. Yeah, a like sweet it. exercise. You know, or maybe you're asexual, and and then maybe talk about your dog or or friend. Yeah, put, put it in the comments. It's gonna get so sappy. <laughs> yeah, I love it. My nephew's only friend is Dave the dog, but I'm gonna take that away. Am I the a hole? Why, why you got to take away Dave the dog? Put him down. Okay. So I found a dog, Dave, that had been abandoned at a dog park. I waited with him until it was dark and then took him home with the intention of trying to find the owner or a rescue that would take him. It's good. He had no collar. And when I took him to my vet, the next day, we couldn't find a microchip. And Bill Gates at it again. <laughs> he was clearly someone's pet at some point. He's neutered, housebroken, and very friendly. Rehoming him never really panned out. No owner ever turned up despite searching and posting on lost pet pages. And I wasn't willing to take him to a kill shelter. My husband was annoyed at first, but it's been almost two years now. My other dog has bonded with him. I've fallen in love with him. And even my husband has grudgingly accepted him. As far as I'm concerned, Dave's part of the family. Oh, this Dave. is kind of cute. This is a cute start to the story. It is cute. My brother-in-law and his family relocated to our city and moved in with us while they were closing on a house. My eight-year-old nephew has autism and it's caused him some struggles. His parents had talked about trying to find him a pet, but I guess they never found a good fit. At least until they met Dave. Oh. He really bonded with Dave to the point where he sneaks out of bed at night to sleep in Dave's dog bed with him. Oh, come on. That is too cute. cute. Dave is all he talks about, and he gets upset whenever we leave the house and don't take the dogs with us. I guess my sister-in-law talked to my husband about keeping Dave when they move out, and my husband told her he'd have to talk with me, but I guess there was a strong insinuation that it would be okay. I only found out about this proposal when my brother-in-law approached me and thanked me for letting them keep Dave before my husband ever even mentioned it to me. Excuse me. My husband and I had a fight, and when the dust settled, it's the three of them against me. My husband feels that because Dave was living with us more by accident than design, we were really fostering him more than keeping him. And so it would be selfish to keep him when my nephew clearly loves him so much. He says we can go to the shelter and get another companion for a dog. So that's like a win-win. Dave gets a home and another dog gets out of the shelter for Christmas. And Dave would certainly be very loved and spoiled with my in-laws. And yet, after two years, he feels like my dog. The thought of giving him away after all this time hurts and the idea that my in-laws are using my nephew's autism as some kind of trump card to prove they're entitled to have him really rubs me the wrong way. And I don't see him as interchangeable. Like I can just pop down to the shelter and score a perfect replacement. First of all, there's a couple updates. But okay. what do you think of this so far? Oh. What would you do? Would you give the autistic kid his dream dog? <laughs> or would you rob that young autistic child of happiness? Also, I feel like the autistic thing shouldn't be like used as a Trump a part card. Part of the consideration. Yeah, I don't think it should be necessarily part of the consideration. Um. <sighs> I think they're using it as leverage. Yeah. Yeah, I think so, too. I, I would be reluctant for sure. I'd probably have to sit and think on it a little bit. And I also like think about the dog, too. The dog's gotten used to this situation for the yeah. last two years to like yeah. uproot the dog again. again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Feels like unfair to the dog. Not too. ideal. Yeah, not ideal at all. If this family feels that they want a dog in their life, go get your own dog. Okay, edit. So my husband doesn't hate Dave. He still plays with him, pets him, gives him treats, etc. Just like he does with our other dog. He just had a feeling that if we took him in, we'd be stuck with him. And that's what happened. I guess that's true. Yeah. We both tried to find a new home for him, but it became clear after a few months it wasn't going to happen. But we did try. I didn't strong arm or bully my husband into keeping him. And while we never formally sat down and said, OK, Dave is officially our dog from this day forward. A lot of things strongly implied that from the time my husband came home from PetSmart with an engraved bone shaped. ID tag for Dave's collar. Oh, that match her other dogs to agreeing to get him microchip with our address and his annual vet visit last year. He jokes that Dave was an accident. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> That's funny. And that he's useless because our other dog is purebred and got trained specifically for hunting, while Dave is just a mutt and sometimes plays fetch and sleeps on the couch. I think my in laws heard Dave's backstory, picked up on the jokes, and assumed maybe we'd be willing to part with him right. since we tried to rehome him before. But I'm not going to divorce my 
my husband because he's willing to part with Dave because I'm almost certain his desire to give Dave to my nephew is coming from a place of wanting my nephew to have something that gives his childhood a sense of normalcy rather than dump a dog he doesn't want on someone else. And I think he really meant to talk to me about my sister-in-law's request. It's just that my brother-in-law was so excited at the possibility of keeping the dog that my brother-in-law beat him to it. And one more update, Dave reacts to my nephew the same way he reacts to everyone. He wags his tail and loves to take treats, but they don't have a transformative connection that transcends all time and space. (laughs) It's not like we all encourage my nephew to get attached to Dave because we thought it would be adorable or funny. It happened rather quickly and organically. So is OP the a-hole by keeping the dog? What do you think, John? No, no. And also, I so we grew up fostering dogs. And I would say through our childhood, we probably fostered like over 30 dogs. Whoa. Um, That's a lot of... Wow, I didn't know that. We would keep them like one at a time. One of them loved eating like my boxers. (laughs) And like literally, I would like pull my pants up (laughs) and my my little kid weenie would just (laughs) just fall around. I'm like, no! (laughs) Um, You're exposing me! So I got pretty good at letting go of dogs like <laughs> john is down to euthanize any dog you give him <laughs> not He's ready to, hold I, on. john hold i heard on. i'm pretty good at putting down dogs <laughs> That's what I heard, right? But yeah, I, you know, at the end of the day, I think OP, this is OP's dog. Just try to to, to see some other dog. Yeah. Just, just try. try. There's other pups in, in the, in the, the ground. Dig up one of the dogs <laughs> John euthanized. There's so many. There's so <laughs> at least many. 30. At least 30. Oh my God. I don't care if they'll be homeless. I'm ready to kick my brother and his wife to the streets. Am I the a-hole? My brother lost his job along with all of his savings several months ago and soon after he asked me if it would be okay if he 28 male and his wife 30 male stayed with me until they could afford a place on their own again i hesitated at first considering i only have a one bedroom apartment that's not much space that's a little tight but according to them they had no other options so i invited them over bought a blow-up air mattress for the living room for the first month things were manageable although admittedly cramped then my my brother told me that sleeping on the mattress was giving him back pains. So he asked if he could buy a small double bed for the living room. For the living room permanently? Uh, it's temporary. I it's, mean, it's temporary. temporary is temporary. Let, let's, let's, put a, let's put a time limit on this. Yeah, yeah. No, let's, let's give a move out period. The living room is by far the biggest room I have. So I told him that would be fine as long as th- there was still room for my couch, the TV, and the bookshelves. The living room is also connected to my kitchen in an open plan style. So I reminded my brother to leave walking space around the bed. Well, now it's been two plus months and things have gotten a lot worse. Dude, yikes. This is not ideal. When they first moved in, I would still use the living room every day to unwind on the couch after work. Now, whenever I go in, there's a strange vibe like I'm intruding. My brother and his wife are often sitting in the bed together when I go in. I always knock and they stare at me pointedly until I leave. They want you to leave for certain reasons. Sometimes when I sit down, they will directly ask me for some alone time and say that they would like to have the room to themselves. This came to a head yesterday when my sister-in-law messaged me with a timetable that she'd made of when it would be a good time for me to use the living room. The time if to <laughs> leave, time use table. his own living room? <laughs> Hold on, Sam. Oh, get a spine. The timetable basically says that they will allow me into the room for one hour each evening, plus around 20 minutes for meal times. The f- this is his. I basically shut her down instantly and told her there was no way that I would be following the timetable since in the end, it's my apartment. She sent me back a huge message with dozens of paragraphs about how my constant presence was ruining her marriage with my brother and they feel like that Bro, they have your no constant pri- presence is ruining my f***ing apartment. And they feel like they have no privacy. I tried to talk this over with my brother that night, but when I got home, neither my brother or sister-in-law were talking talking to me so he's clearly just as pissed today an amazon parcel arrived for my brother with a lock for the living room door Get the f- out of my apartment which i told him there's absolutely no way i will allow him to install it my brother says i'm creepy for wanting constant access to where they sleep and he's insisting on installing the lock anyways so am i the a-hole for not giving my brother and his wife their privacy 
kick them out right now. I need an update. Please tell me there's an update. There's no update. There's no there's, update. There's nothing. This is bull****, There's John. nothing. This is bull****. This is a story that needs an update. The fact that this guy is just letting his brother and this 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 wife, this, this terrible, terrible brother and his wife doing nothing all day except taking up space. Opie needs to freaking kick him out. A good question is how long is too long a stay? What would be your your minimum um, and maximum for like, like you know, a close friend or a family member? Has someone ever overstayed their welcome mm. at your place? We'd love to hear stories around that. I told my pregnant daughter that she cannot have a baby. <laughs> I want to stop her by any means necessary. Am I the a-hole? How dare you think that just because I had you that you can also have a baby? Yeah, the gall. I, 58 female, and my husband, Rob, 61 one male have two kids erica 35 female and mike 30 male both kids are married but erica and her husband steve 38 male live nearby to us and this issue concerns them they work full-time and have two kids five male and four female five years ago my daughter asked my husband and me if we would be willing to become their full-time child care so she could continue to work and afford their comfortable life full-time you say last time i checked a uh, full-time comes with a check we agreed, but we didn't discuss much more than watching the baby and their expectations. We are not paid and we didn't ask to be. My daughter and sister-in-law have plenty of money and are reasonable when it comes to cost, but my sister-in-law is very cheap. I was a teacher and retired two years before I could make my pension, so my husband continued to work and we made a few sacrifices like vacations and adding to our savings, but we were able to make it work so I could take my full pension at 55 and my husband retired a year later. Nice. Sounds pretty good. Our arrangement worked and we enjoyed having the kids, except by year three, 2020, we started to feel like they were taking advantage of our help. In 2020, during the lockdown, they were both working from home and they expected us to keep the kids all day. And we wanted to split the time during the week since their preschool slash daycare was closed. We settled on two with them and three with us. And my sister-in-law complained about it pretty much every day. Okay, what do you want to like spend time with your kids? Absolutely not. I am optimizing every second of my life to ensure that I never have to never interact have to see, with my I children. Mean, like, isn't that why like you send your kids off to boarding school? See ya. Things got a little better when the kids were in school. Fast forward to year four, 2021. We have a bit of a blow up over kindergarten. My daughter did not want five male to start school in the unknown, but I insisted that he needed to go because I needed a break. I also asked for four female to spend more time at preschool slash daycare program. Sister-in-law complained about the cost, but I pushed anyway. They relented. And then this past spring, sister-in-law pushed for us to take the kids for a week so they could go on vacation. We said, they could take the kids. And he said they couldn't afford it. No one went on vacation. Dude, these parents sound like they just do not want to take care of their kids. Maybe that is too much background, but I feel like the context is important for what I said. My daughter and I were casually having a conversation the other day, and she mentioned she had an OBGYN appointment and tests. I asked if everything was okay. And she said Steve and her were trying for baby number three. Yo, you can't take care of baby number one and two. I asked her what her childcare plan was, and she looked at me like I was crazy and said, us. You're not just going to keep doing what you're doing, right? Bro. I said that it would have been nice if she told me this before trying for another baby. She said it was none of my business. I then told her that we were not a viable child care option for a new baby and begged her to reconsider. If I'm taking care of your kids, it becomes my business. Poor female is going off to kindergarten. We feel like we are getting our days back to some extent and I refuse to start all over again with an infant. Erica said we are making her choose between her dream of three kids and financial stability. I argued that she has two beautiful children and they are financially stable. They shouldn't ruin that with another baby. I might be the a-hole because Erica feels like we should have told her sooner. I feel like I am not because I never agreed to a lifetime of raising their kids. And there is a pretty juicy update. But is OP the a-hole for not automatically raising this third child? I want to know what you guys think in the comments below. And also, there's like context here or like a lot of families will have their grandparents in the home and the yeah. grandparents are like somewhat expected to take care of the kids. I want to know what it was like in your household.
household? Like, where did your grandparents take care of you mostly? Was it your parents? Um, but John, is OP the a-hole for saying, I'm not going to raise your third child? Absolutely not. Oh. Yeah, no, I don't think that OP is the a-hole because like OP is literally given three years, not complaining of, of full time. To me, I'm like, you've saved all of that money over all of those years, right? You should now be able to start, you know, child care and things like that. Speaking of children, I think uh, you gotta, you gotta, we're going to bring a child into the mix. Say hi to our child. Okay, so there's an update. My daughter came to pick up the kids this evening and asked her if we could talk. We were both much calmer this time and I explained my point of view on another baby and feeling blindsided by her declaration of baby number three. She said she mentioned wanting three after she got married, but I don't recall the conversation. Our talk was productive and she shared that she's the one pushing for another while her husband doesn't love the idea, but isn't completely against it. She confessed that she has doubts she would still have him on board if he found out they would be paying for childcare this time around. Her husband grew up on the poor side and budgets for everything. He worries about losing his job, why he complained about the kids being around during COVID and letting his kids down. I sympathize more with him now that she shared this side of their marriage with me. She admitted that I was probably right about another baby and she's going to talk to Steve tonight about moving forward with this plan, but with the caveat that the baby would be in full-time daycare with my husband and me helping in an emergency. We're also able to discuss our current situation. I expect expressed that I feel underappreciated given everything I have done for her and her family. And she shared that she is jealous that she can't be with them instead. I felt for her as a working mom myself, except I had my summers with my kids. She said she would talk to Steve about enrolling the kids in the before slash after care program come September. And we would take them as we usually do, but we can also send them to the program when needed. It kind of sounds like things got somewhat resolved. A option was presented. I think both sides like learned a little bit about I don't know where each side was coming from, but I would love to know from, from you guys again, like how does care for your kids work in your family? How involved your parents slash grandparents? It seems like a lot that the daughter is asking to like fully take care of these kids like every single day. To me, because she had to ask, the assumption for their culture wasn't that it exactly. was just automatically yeah. going to happen, right? Yeah. My Mormon mom is disgusted because my son looks like a girl. I'm going to destroy her. Am I the a-hole? Jesus looked like a girl with a beard, long hair. I, 32 female, was raised Mormon, but I'm not now, nor do I follow any other religion. My mom is still very much in the cult. As such, she has the typical Mormon mindset regarding gender roles and all that BS. Granted, I still think she'd be this way without her religion, though maybe not as bad. All people be intolerant. So with me and my mom, we get along splendidly, except when the topic of religion comes up, which doesn't happen often. So my mom is visiting right now. I don't see her in person much, but she came down for my birthday. It's also important to note that I have two sons. My five-year-old has a mohawk and my three-year-old has a shaggy shoulder length haircut. Um, Ew. That's First disgusting. All, gross. I can't imagine someone's hair touching their shoulders. He's never had a haircut for a multitude of reasons. Never. He's three years old. I didn't have my first haircut till I was like two and a half. None of which would even be asked if you were a girl. Not long after my mom got here, she started going in on my son's hair. This is not the first time she's given her opinion on it. Why don't I cut it? Don't I want to prevent him from getting bullied or from people thinking he's a girl? Oh no, God forbid someone misgenders your baby. Because he hasn't asked, I want it to be his choice. Because he acts like I'm murdering him when I brush his teeth and his hair. Because he also flails around like he's having an exorcism. So imagine Imagine that with a pair of scissors. Sounds like you don't know how to control your kid. Ooh, lay yeah. it down, Sam. Because if someone sees long hair and assumes girl, that's on them. And a simple he's a boy directs it. But mostly it's because I don't freaking want to do it. She got pissed and said what she really thought, which was, well, I just don't like long hair on boys. Aww. OK, well, luckily, you're not going to date this baby. <laughs> so yet she has no problem with my other son's mohawk. Guess that's boyish enough for her. And my mom said this in front of both of my sons, which pissed me off. I said the first thing that came to my head, which was, if you have a problem with long hair on boys, I suggest you take it up with your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. There we go. The good old boom, boom, Jesus boom. method. You can start by asking him to get it haircut. Paul John the Barber. Bruh.
If looks could kill, I'd be in outer darkness right now. She's steeped in her anger for a while, but didn't say anything else. She hasn't changed her opinion, nor will she. But I don't think she wants to get roasted again either, so she won't bring it up anymore. I feel like we're both a-holes. As much as I hate her religion, that was a low blow, and I have a tendency to speak first and regret later. Though I don't necessarily regret my words, I do regret how they made her feel. She is my mom after all. There's a quick update. Oh, my heavenly father. I didn't expect this all. Thanks for all the war rewards and honest responses. I'm glad I can make many of you laugh. I'm here all night. Seriously, though, I'm working until 7 a.m. and going to waste it all on reading comments. Thank you all in the telestial kingdom. Huh. So, I mean, the question is, is she the a-hole? Is she for, the a-hole for the comment? For the comment think, about, right? yo, Jesus had long hair. I don't think I don't think she's an a-hole for just pointing out, yo, your main dude had the same long hair. Yeah. So what's what's the deal? Yeah, I could see people getting offended by it for sure, but it's I, I think it's at the end of the day, just like stop. Why does it matter? It doesn't matter. Except he looks too beautiful. He's serving Lux. Serving too many looks. My husband keeps crashing and ruining my job interviews. I locked him out, but then chaos ensued. I, female 33, am employed, but God knows I have been looking for jobs. I'm a sales rep for over five months. And right now I am recovering from my knee surgery. My husband has a high paying job. First, he suggested I leave my career as a sales rep behind, not up to his wealthy family standards. They'd mocked me a lot for it. And he says I should stay at home. But I refuse because I love my job and want to grow in it. Sales is like literally tied to money. What? Yeah. I don't understand. You can make as much money as you want in a sales job. Come on. He suggested he finds me a better job since he has connections, but that's not my field. I've had several job interviews and my husband has ruined all of them for me. And here's how. He'd walk into the room whenever I'm having a potential job interview and introduce himself and then take over the conversation with the interviewer. He'd tell them about how good I am, but slip some bad stuff in that eventually would cost me the job. What? 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 What, what kind of he says he's like oh i know how to help you bro you you're, you're not even doing a good he's job sabotaging her his argument was that he's just making recommendations since he has connections and quote unquote influence but i told him to stop and let me handle it he saw saying he's just trying to guide me and whatnot oh my god what a tool several days ago i'd gotten a job interview and after getting inside the room and before the interview started i locked the door my husband tried to come in yet again oh my god get up <laughs> The hint, bro. <laughs> Literally. And then he started knocking on the door, asking why I was locking the door and telling me to let him in. I put my headphones on and used noise canceling, but he kept knocking, telling me to open the door. After the interview was over, I unlocked the door and walked out. He went off on me, calling me disrespectful and awful to lock him out like that. She's in a interview. Bro. I said I was sorry. OP, oh, you don't need to apologize. I wanted to work for this company so badly and I couldn't let him ruin it for me. He got offended and said that I was being petty and childish and also ungrateful because of the stunt I pulled and said that he was trying to help me get the best deal out there. I said, I'm not a child, but he said that yes, I was, especially with how I behaved for excluding him from the interview. Bruh. Okay. Wow. I want to know what all of you think. Put your answers in the comments below. Is OP being the a-hole by locking her husband out of the room that she's interviewing in? John, what do you think? Yeah, I do not think OP is the a-hole. Not think at all. Verbu is a thousand percent the a-hole. What a like, I know. <laughs> Get a clue, uh, bro. But let us know what you think. Put your answers in the comments. We love hearing from you. Guys, we love you. Subscribe, comment. We might just read it, and we'll see you on the next one.